my wife's name out your do you remember the 2022 Oscars? Because they were a hot mess. The nominees for Achievement in Sound. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Just like my previous videos, I've been going back and covering the most messy and chaotic award shows, and the 2022 Oscars are no exception. Let's jump right into it because a lot happened. The show starts with Serena and Venus Williams introducing a performance of Be Alive by Beyonce. It starts off with performers in Chartreuse walking down a street in Compton. One of them is on a horse that's giving Little Nas X Old Town Road. The woman that reminds us that we are in fact the visual, Beyonce and the rest of her dancers are on a tennis court because the song is for the movie King Richard, a movie about the father of the Williams sisters. This performance was one of the last performances before her renaissance era. Well, yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. yes. The announcer then introduces the host of this year's awards. Please welcome your host. Even though it is not singular, it is plural. We have three hosts this year, Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Regina Hall. And what may be the most prestigious way to introduce the hosts officially, you may ask? DJ K! The three queens right! I love how I have this picture in my head that the Oscars are like the super serious, we respect our craft type awards, but they are just as messy as all of the other awards. Amy says this. This year, the Academy hired three women to host because it's cheaper than hiring one man. <laughs> they then talk about how COVID has been really hard on people. Look at Timothy Chalamet. Oh God. Uh, Smash. They then say this. As many of you know, a decision was made to present some behind the scene awards in the first mm -hmm. hour. Yeah, it was a controversial and difficult decision, yeah. but you know, I think we've moved on. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. For those that do not know, many behind the scenes type awards were scrapped from the main show and instead presented in the pre-show to a lot of criticism. Basically, ABC executives were like, these lesser known awards are not as interesting to people watching at home, so we need more time for we don't talk about Bruno in exchange for we don't talk about these other awards. This is a mess because it is really disrespectful to all of the hardworking people that work on films. It's basically saying that people only care about the actors and directors and not the hundreds to thousands of other people that work on the movies. They then talk about the snubs of this year's awards. Rachel Zegler for West Side Story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jennifer Hudson for Respect. Yep. And Lady Gaga and Jared Leto for House of Random Accents. It is very important to note that Rachel was not only snubbed at this year's awards, but was also not invited. More on this later. Amy then says this. You know what's, uh, what's in the In Memoriam package this what's year? That? The Golden Globes. Mm. Oh. <laughs> they didn't have any black people. Regina then says this. You know, I was very disappointed that Space Jam 2 did not get nominated in the special effects category oh for that hairline they gave LeBron James. Oh my God, amazing. It was really good. Wanda says this. We're gonna have a great night uh, tonight and for you people in Florida, we're gonna have a gay night. Gay, 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 gay. For those that do not know, this is referencing several states, including Florida, passing the Don't Say Gay Bill, which is basically prohibiting teachers and other people like librarians from talking about sexual orientation in classrooms. Amy then says this. After years of Hollywood ignoring women's stories, this year we finally got a movie about the incredible Williams sisters' dad. <laughs> and also this joke. Don't Look Up is nominated. Yes. Yep, I guess the Academy members don't look up reviews. <laughs> Fun fact, this was the original idea for the joke, but it was scrapped. She says this. Leonardo DiCaprio, what can I even say about him? It's, he's done so much to fight climate change and leave behind a cleaner, greener planet for his girlfriends. For those that do not know, Le you know what? I'll just let Amy explain. Because he's older and... <laughs> And they're younger. Okay, you get it. She then roasts Being the Ricardos, a movie about the iconic comedian Lucille Ball. The, the innovation to make a movie about Lucille Ball without even a moment that's funny, I... <laughs> 
Not your fault, Nicole. Daniel Kaluuya and her then come out to the stage to present the award for Best Supporting Actress. The nominees are Jesse Buckley for The Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose, West Side Story, Judy Dench, Belfast, Kirsten Dunst, The Power of the Dog, and Ingenue Ellis, King Richard. I love how it shows intense, dramatic scenes from these movies and then it just cuts to the nominees smiling and giggling. Don't you dare ever again. <laughs> Angela Bassett did the thing chanteuse, Ariana DeBose, wins. Regina then does a bit where she tells the audience that some people have to get retested for COVID because their tests were defective. Bradley Cooper, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, Tyler Perry, Simu Liu, Will Smith. Um, you're married, but you know what? You're on the list and looks like Jada approved you, so you get on up here. <laughs> She tries to include Jacob Elordi, but I don't even think she knows who he is. Is that, uh, Jacob Elordi? Is that how you say it? Elordi? Josh Brolin and Jason Momoa then come out to the stage, and before Regina leaves, she does a COVID pat down. Get on down here. Make sure you're okay. They both present the award for best sound, but before it cuts to the nominees, you can hear Josh Brolin burp. The nominees for achievement in sound. It is giving Wendy Williams. Yeah. I genuinely think that he thought he was going to get away with this, that they were going to cut to the nomination bumper and they would mute his mic feed so they wouldn't capture the bird, but he was a few seconds too early. <laughs> Actually, a lot of seconds too early because they have some technical difficulties. <laughs> The nominees are Belfast, Dune, No Time to Die, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. Instead of getting the usual reveal with the winner's cut, instead we are told instantly that Dune wins and they are already on the stage. It feels like a way to save time, but once again it feels like the Oscars are jading the awards with less spectacle. Hamish Abernathy then comes out to the stage with the next two District 12 tributes for the 76 Hunger Games, Rosie Perez and Wesley Snipes. Just kidding, they actually come out to celebrate the 30 year anniversary of the film White Men Can't Jump. Rosie wiggles her earlobe and I'm assuming that this is her way of signaling to her family that she loves him. I've heard that, like, that means that. Wesley then does not realize that it is his turn to speak. Listen to the woman. Listen to the woman. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the woman. That's you! Oh, it's me! Okay. <laughs> they then present the award for best cinematography. The nominees are Dune, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and West Side Story. Dune wins. The Queen of Basketball then wins the award for Best Short Documentary. The director, Ben Proudfoot, says this. President Biden, bring Brittany Griner home. For those that do not know, Griner was arrested in Russia for shrug, shruggling charges. She was prescribed medical shmanibus, but it is illegal in Russia. This was already after the West had imposed sanctions on Russia due to the invasion of Ukraine. Ultimately, on the 15th of May 2022, the US and Russia did a prisoner swap where Griner returned home in exchange. Arms dealer Victor Boot, who had already served 10 years of his 25-year sentence, was able to return to Russia. Jacob Elordi and Rachel Ziegler then come out to the stage. They say this. Growing up in Australia, I never thought that I would stand on this stage. And I never thought that I would be here six days ago. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, Rachel Ziegler was initially not invited to the Oscars even though she was the leading actress in West Side Story that was nominated for the Best Picture Award. There were a few reasons why Rachel was initially not invited. Firstly, there were social distancing rules at place, so there were less seats to offer. Then, all of the nominees would each get two tickets based on the amount of nominations that they got. So if you were nominated three times, you'd get six tickets. Then, the rest of the tickets were distributed between the movie studios proportionally proportionally based on the amount of nominations that each studio got. And Disney that was in charge of distributing the tickets for West Side Story chose not to give Rachel a ticket. This led to a lot of media backlash online. People were confused. They were saying, what do you mean the lead actress in a movie that is nominated for Best Picture is not going to the awards? So ultimately, the Academy invited her to present. They then present the award for Best Visual Effects. The nominees are Dune, Free Guy, No Time to Die, Shang-Chi and the Legend of Ten Rings, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Dune wins and Miss Incoming, Miss Incoming. Thank you.
Stephanie Beatrixson comes out to the stage to introduce a performance of Dos Orequitas. Real life Disney princesses Lily James, Naomi Scott, and Halle Bailey then come out to the stage. Well, yes! They present the award for Best Animated Feature. The nominees are Encanto, Flea, Luca, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Encanto wins. We then get a scene where Wanda visits the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. This famous Oscar gown worn by Little Richard Cher, Cher. in 1986. Hey, Harvey Weinstein. Ya Jung Yoon then comes out to the stage to present the award for Best Supporting Actor. The nominees are Kieran Hines, Belfast, Troy Kotzer, Coda, Jesse Plemons, The Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons, being the Ricardos, and Cody Smith McPhee, The Power of the Dog. Troy Kotzer wins. Simu Liu and Tiffany Haddish, who will later do a costume change. You do a little, a little costume change? Um, I, I'm not wearing a costume, I'm wearing Dolce Gabbana. <laughs> It's called an evening gown, darling. Come out to the stage. They present the award for Best International Feature Film. The nominees are Drive My Car, Flea, The Hand of God, Lunana, and the worst person in the world. Drive My Car wins and we get another interruption. Thank you very much. Uh, and I also would like to... Just a moment. I'm a tad confused with the lady with the notepad. I assume she's there to translate if he needs it, but he never ends up needing anything. Mila Kunison comes out to the stage to introduce a performance of Somehow You Do from the film Four Good Days, sung by Reba McIntyre. Ruth E. Carter and Lupita Nyong'o then come out to the stage and we get another pause. It's through costumes. That's you. Oh, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> They present the award for Best Costume Design. The nominees are Cruella, Serrano, Dune, Nightmare Alley, and West Side Story. Cruella wins because the devil's in the details, darling. John Leguizamo then comes out to the stage to introduce a performance of We Don't Talk About Bruno with a surprise feature by Megan Thee Stallion. Then afterwards, Louis Fonzi and Rebecca G. Wright then come out to the stage. Our hosts then come out to the stage again. Wanda is dressed up as King Richard, Regina as Tammy Faye, and Amy as Spider-Man. Jennifer Garner, Elliot Page, and J.K. Simmons then come out to the stage to celebrate 15 years of Juno. When Elliot starts talking, you can hear the crowd murmuring. It's probably because they're commenting on his voice change since starting his transition. Juno had me hooked from the very first page and was completely completely infused with Diablo Cody's distinctive voice. They then present the award for Best Original Screenplay. The nominees are Belfast, Don't Look Up, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, and The Worst Person in the World. Belfast wins. It's giving Cher, Sean Touche, Sean Mendes, and it goes with my Bob, Sean Touche, Tracy Ellis Ross, and come out to the stage. It goes with my Bob. They present the award for Best Adapted Screenplay. The nominees are Coda, Drive My Car, Dune, The Lost Daughter, and The Power of the Dog. Coda wins. Sean Hedder definitely rewore this outfit to the Renaissance tour. Rami Malek then comes out to introduce a performance of No Time to Die by Billie Eilish and Phineas. Dune then wins for Best Film Editing, and Joe Walker calls out Stan Twitter. So you may not know, but the words Oscar nominated can be used in the hands of a skilled 17-year-old as an insult. Regina then makes the most savage roast of the night. Now, here's something. What's that? I have a movie, and no one has ever seen this movie. Never been seen. It's a never been seen movie. Okay. Okay, not even by the director. Uh-oh. Now, I got a screener of The Last Duel. <laughs> <laughs> never been seen. Never been seen. For those that do not know, actually, for everyone, The Last Duel was released in 2021 that flopped. I mean, it had a $100 million budget and it only made $30.6 million worldwide. Wikipedia does not list this as a reason for why this movie flopped, but I had no idea that this movie existed. I had to Google up what is The Last Duel just to find out what this joke was referring to. So I chalk up the flopation of this movie to terrible promotion. Wanda then says this. Here is a voter registration form for the state of Texas. Oh boy, look at that. Oh, not again. They then talk to Dame Judi Dench who had just lost her award category. They give her some words of wisdom. A quote from Kim Kardashian. Uh -huh. Work harder. That's right. That's what we need you to do. Get your f 
can ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Miss incoming, miss incoming. Chris Rock comes out to the stage. He makes a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith, who have worked together in the past on the Madagascar movies and have even shared a podium with each other at the 2005 Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> Okay, Chris, all right now. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Since we have made it this far already, please do not forget to subscribe if you have not done so already. Jada did not take kindly to this joke. The main reason why she shaves her head is because she struggles with alopecia, and the next thing we know, Will Smith is walking up to the stage and Chris is laughing about it. I have said in a lot of my other videos that Will Smith and Chris Rock are intrinsically linked at award shows. They are with each other for so many award shows. I can't believe it. It was a rap award and Will Smith didn't win. How rare is that? Will Smith win everything. But at this awards, he gets slapped in the face. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the out of it. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. Wow, dude. Yes. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. I'm going to, okay? I remember when I first saw this, I was adamant that this was a stage publicity stunt, but when I found out that this was real, I was shook. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Chris Rock looks incredibly shaken up and confused by this whole thing because as he continues to try and say his lines, he keeps on stuffing up. So we are here to uh, give a documentary out, to give an Oscar out for best documentary. The documentaries, the nominees are, let's just go to the nominees. This moment was referred to as the slap that was heard around the world. The Academy itself released a statement saying that they requested for Smith to leave the ceremony, but he refused. But then there were conflicting statements that said that people did not witness him ever being asked to leave. So I don't know. After the ceremony, LAPD officers were prepared to arrest Will Smith on charges of battery, but Chris Rock refused to press charges. Following a lot of public backlash, Will Smith issued a formal apology directly apologizing to Chris Rock. I apologize to you. On April 1st, 2022, Will Smith resigned from his Academy membership, but this was seen as a preemptive move because it would have been most likely that he would have been expelled if he didn't leave. A week later, on April 8th, the Academy issued a statement saying that Will Smith was banned from the Oscars for 10 years. This moment significantly impacted Will Smith's career. SAG after released a statement condemning Will Smith's behavior. Netflix canceled a planned sequel to his 2017 movie Bright. Since the Oscars, the only movie that Will Smith has been in was Emancipation. However, even this was filmed before the Oscars took place. His next upcoming movie is a still untitled fourth Bad Boys movie set to be released in 2024. Ultimately, this moment was so significant to Will Smith and Chris Rock's careers that it is now featured in both of their top sections on their Wikipedias. Heading back to the awards, Chris presents the award for best documentary feature. The nominees are Ascension, Attica, Flea, Summer of Soul, and Writing with Fire. Before reading out the winner, Chris Rock makes a joke about the mess of Faye Dunaway reading out La La Land instead of Moonlight for the winner for best picture. The winner is... Ooh, I hope this is right. Summer of Soul wins. Diddy, P. Diddy, Puffy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, then comes out to the stage and says this. Okay, Will and Chris, we're gonna solve that like family at the gold party. He then presents the 50th anniversary tribute to the Godfather trilogy and Francis Ford Coppola, Al Pacino and Robert De Niro come out to the stage. During the in memoriam section, Jamie Lee Curtis talks about the loss of Betty White, but then says that the best gift that you can give Betty is by adopting a rescue animal. Jake Gyllenhaal and Zoe Kravitzen come out to the stage to present the award for best original song. The nominees are Be Alive from King Richard, Dos Orquitas from Encanto, Down to Joy from Belfast, No Time to Die from No Time to Die, and Somehow You Do from Four Good Days. Billie Eilish and Phineas win for No Time to Die. Kevin Costner then comes out to the stage to present the award for best director. The nominees are Belfast, Drive My Car, Licorice Pizza, The Power of the Dog, 
in West Side Story. Fellow New Zealander Jane Campion wins. She starts off her acceptance speech by saying hello New Zealand and Australia in te reo Māori, the language of Māori, the indigenous people of New Zealand. It didn't happen at the Oscars but it did happen during this award season. I think it's important to note that Jane Campion was highly criticized for a comment that she made during her acceptance speech at the Critics' Choice Awards when she told Serena and Venus Williams that they don't have to play against the guys like she has to. However, you do not play against the guys. <laughs> like I have to. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman and John Travolta then come out to the stage to celebrate the 28th anniversary of Pulp Fiction. A very weird number to celebrate. Okay. Whatever that means. However, after 28 years, they finally reveal the contents of the briefcase. <laughs> they then present the award for Best Actor. The nominees are Javier Bardem for Being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch for Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom, Will Smith for King Richard, and Denzel Washington for The Tragedy of Macbeth. Will Smith wins and gets a standing ovation. He says this. Richard Williams was a fierce defender of his family. Ultimately, his speech becomes less about an acceptance for the award for his acting and more about addressing what just happened with Chris Rock. He starts tearing up and talks about the criticism that gets laid upon you when you are in the public eye. He then makes an apology, but at this time it was not directed at Chris Rock. Love will make you do crazy things. Hope the Academy invites me back. Coming back from the commercial break, Amy Schumer makes this joke. I've been getting out of that Spider-Man costume. Did I miss anything? There's like a different vibe in here. She then makes a joke that she will massively regret later. Here's a seat filler. Can we get you up, honey? You, you want to go to the bathroom? Okay. Let, let's just get you. Thank you. Seat fillers. Love them. You know, that, that was my wife, Amy. You're married to that seat filler? People must have thought that her acting was really good because they genuinely believed that she was being serious. People actually thought that Amy Schumer had no idea who Kirsten Dunst was. Like, this is so dumb. Amy received death threats for this joke and even said that the Secret Service and the LAPD reached out to her because of all of these death threats. Anthony Hopkins then comes out to the stage and says this. Will Smith said it all. What more can be said? Let's have peace and love and quiet and... Wonderful, thank you. He then presents the award for Best Actress. The nominees are Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter, Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers, Nicole Kidman for Being the Ricardos, and Kristen Stewart for Spencer. Jessica Chastain wins and gives a very heartfelt speech about fighting against bigoted hate towards LGBTQIA plus people. Finally, Lady Gaga and Liza Minnelli come out to the stage. I've always appreciated the way that Lady Gaga has treated others, especially people that need help. But now what am I, I don't understand. I got it. You know how I love working with legends. Liza is obviously going through health complications and Lady Gaga's main motivation is to maintain Liza's dignity, which is so comforting to see. At the end of a speech, you can hear Lady Gaga whisper to Liza, I got you, and she responds, I know, thank you. I got you, I know, thank you. They then present the award for best picture. The nominees are Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. Before the winner is revealed, it appears that Liza has already forgotten that they had started presenting, so Gaga delicately reminds her of her task. I'm so happy to be here, and especially with you. I'm your biggest fan. Are you excited to announce Best Picture? Oh, yeah. And oh, the yeah. Oscar goes to... Okay, Coda. During the acceptance speech, you can hear noise coming from another mic, and then you can hear the ruffling noises of him trying to turn off the other mic. They're all so incredible. We're so honored to be here. Sean, from her first day shooting. Wanda, Amy, and Regina then close out the show by wearing pajamas and telling everyone to go to bed. And that is the end of the 2022 Oscars. What a hot 
mess. A reminder that I have a Patreon where I'm releasing exclusive content. Right now I have a video up on the 2009 VMA pre-show and it was a hot mess. You definitely need to go check it out. Link is in the bio or hey, it's right there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below telling me which award show I should cover next. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and heck, why not share with your friends? And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.